Hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. Hallelujah. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. All of my glory belongs All of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory. All of the glory belongs to you. Hallelujah. All of the glory belongs to you. You deserve it. Hallelujah. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. All of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory. All of the glory belongs to you. Hallelujah. All of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory belongs to you. You deserve it. All of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory. All of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory belongs to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All of the glory belongs to you. You deserve it. Hallelujah. Everybody please stand. You deserve it. Hallelujah. You deserve it, Lord Jesus. You deserve it. Thank you, Lord. You deserve it. Hallelujah, one more time. You deserve it. Hallelujah. You deserve it. Hallelujah. You deserve it. You deserve it. 
deserve it. Hallelujah. 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 He deserve it, Lord Jesus. He deserve, deserve all the glory, all the praise, all the honor, Lord Jesus. He deserve everything that we are, everything that we have, Lord Jesus, because of you. We thank you, Lord God. We love you, Lord Jesus. We honor your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You deserve everything, Lord God. We love you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of the glory, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 In the precious and wonderful name of Jesus, we come to you tonight, Lord Jesus, praising you, thanking you, Lord Jesus, letting you know that you deserve it, Lord Jesus, everything, Lord God. We just ask, Lord Jesus, that you bless us tonight, Lord Jesus. Just open our hearts, Lord God. Open our minds, Lord Jesus. Take away all distractions, Lord God, and have us concentrate on your word, Lord Jesus. We just ask that you bring those that are not here in tonight, Lord God. We know that you got something special, Lord Jesus, every night. And we just thank you for it, Lord. We ask that you bless our pastor in a mighty, mighty way. Continue to give them what your people need, Lord God. Continue to just give us everything, Lord Jesus, no matter how how much we don't like it at times, Lord God. Just continue to work on us, Lord God. And we just praise your name, Lord God. We thank you for this fast, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. It opens our hearts, Lord God. You, it Lord. makes us look at ourselves, Lord Jesus. And when we fall off, Lord God, just remind us that it's not about us. It's not about what we want, Lord God. It's about you and what you deserve and what you require from us, Lord Jesus. We ask that you bless the first family in a mighty, mighty way for their faithfulness, Lord God, for their dedication to your people, Lord God. Bless the sanctuary, Lord Jesus, and every single person that's in it, Lord God. Just continue, Lord God, just to send a message, Lord Jesus, the way you've been sending it. Just help us to kill out this old ugly flesh, Lord God. No matter how much we try to do right, Lord God, it's always before us. And we just say thank you, Lord God, because you continue to help us to kill ourselves out, Lord God. It's not about us, Lord Jesus. And we just want to let you know that we love you and we praise you, Lord God. Bless the service on tonight. Just bless everybody, Lord God. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise ye the Lord. Everybody doing good? Yeah, maybe I'm all right. You're doing good. I've been praying about y'all, for y'all, about y'all. I know some of y'all is struggling, but it's, it's, it's almost over, and, and I've been praying and asking the Lord what to do. I don't know what he said yet. Come on, let's go to Second Peter, chapter 2. How you doing there, Brother Tommy? Uh, he ain't got a lot of energy, huh? Praise the Lord, sir. <laughs> You know, a fasting is designed to make you weak, but not only in your flesh, in your mind, in your in your in your um, what's the word I'm looking for? Your own power, and you realize it's the power of God. Amen. And I, I know some of y'all. I know some of y'all, I really need to do something to help you out for the next day. And some of y'all could use the help but don't want the help. You want to know that I can do this. You know, so it, it kind of leaves me in a bit twixt too as to what to do. So, you know, if God don't answer me, then you know you got to keep going. <laughs> if God answer me, then i tell you what he says. But, you know, we can do this. We can do this. We can do this, you know. You know, 
the, the, the best thing about it, it, it is that we are not like other people. I tell you all the time. Church of Apostolicity, we're not like other people. We're not like other, we're, we're not Christian. And we're not, we're not like the average saint. If we're going to move this world and turn it upside down, we got to go beyond the norm. You know, we got to push, you know. But I don't, I don't want nobody, because see, if, if, I, if I don't change a little bit for you to help you out, somebody may give up and they feel like they got defeated. Like, well, I didn't finish. Then you feel, I don't want you feeling like that. But then I have us that, that saying, I'm going to do this regardless how weak I get. I don't want us to feel like, man, Pastor, you didn't give me a chance to prove myself. You know, so when, when, you, when you come to a situation like that, you have to let God tell you what to do. You know? Um, because I, I can tell you all, you're not hungry. You're not thirsty. You are tired of being weak. Listen to me. You're not hungry. You're not thirsty. You're thinking about food, but you really don't want it. You're just thinking about it because you know you haven't had it because you're weak, and you know the only way to get your strength back is to eat and or drink something. And that's true. Amen. Um, uh, so don't, don't, don't sweat it yet. Let's hear what the Lord have to say tonight, then we'll see at the end of Bible class, all right? So y'all don't have to talk for the next hour and a half. I'll do all the talking. I won't ask you to stand up. If, if you nod off, I won't say nothing. You know? <laughs> Amen? Um, Second Peter chapter 2, verse what? I just want verse 2. Read. What does it say? And many shall follow their by reason of whom the way of truth. God put on my spirit, my heart, and mind um, to see how many times did Paul tell us to fight the devil. So I went through the epistles. Now the gospels tells you to fight him all the time because he wasn't dead yet, or defeated rather. He had not been defeated. But when Jesus went off the scene, the devil was defeated. His, his power was broken. He has no more power. All power is given unto me. That's what Jesus said. And when Jesus said that, what he meant is that he had all power to control individuals. Not the, the, the system of the world, but individuals. Then he sent back his power and put it in us, what we call the Holy Ghost. Now, we have all power over our lives. Nobody has power over your life. And, and, and the truth be said, God doesn't even have power over your life anymore. He gave it all to you. When Adam was on the scene, Adam had all power over his own life. He chose to go and eat that fruit. God did not influence him. God did not threaten him. God just told him, when you eat it, you're going to die. Now, if you want to die, go eat the fruit. If you want to live, stay away from it. God had basically told us the same thing. He said, if you live righteous and holy, you'll live. If you don't, you're going to die. You make a decision. It's your call. So God is saying, I don't have power over your life, nor does the devil have power over your life. The power is in us. And if you give it up, then you give it up to someone. Now, if you give it up to Jesus, you're still going to make heaven. If you give it up to the devil, you're going to hell. But it's your power now. Amen? Um, the devil had the power over death. He had the power over sin. If you remove sin, life is a piece of cake. It really is. But you have to remove the sin. That's why all through the epistles, Paul is telling us, saved folks, saints, stop, 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 don't do, resist, don't do, don't do this, and ignore all of that. But he's never saying that the devil has power to do anything, because he doesn't. He does not have any power. The power is within you. Jesus hinted at it in the Gospels when he said that uh, uh, the kingdom of God is within you. 
In other words, you have the knowledge to live right. You just don't have the power. So after he died, he gave us the power because we have the knowledge. We know that we are not supposed to lie. We know that. We don't need the Bible to tell us that. We know that. But we don't have the power not to lie. So the Holy Ghost comes in and gives us the power not to lie. Amen. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Now, I, I, I used the concordance and everything, and I, and I hope it was right, and I'm going to preach believing it was right, that the devil is never mentioned in the book of Romans because he was telling the individual, y'all got to learn to do this yourself. You got the power, just do it. Amen? But they didn't know, you know, it's it, it just like you know, I could go by uh, somebody like, say, Joseph. Joseph never owned a car, you know, I could go get Joseph uh, uh, a car like Arnold's, you know. But Joseph never owned a car. He don't know he can make that car turn a dough night without thinking about it. I hope you haven't tried that yet, have you? No, you haven't done that. Okay. But that car do it without a lot of effort. It's made. It's a, what they call a muscle car. You know, then you can put more stuff in it, and it can do some amazing things. But you take somebody that been driving, like me, the first thing we buy a car like that, we want to test that out because I know what it can do. What am I saying? We don't know what the Holy Ghost can do because we never had that kind of power before. Amen. Neither did none of the, the, the saints in, in, in the time Paul was writing letter. We don't realize what something can do until we've had it. That's why as you get older in Christ, you should know the power you have. You should know that the devil can't do nothing to me. Every, if, if we grow up and be adults in, in the spiritual like we're supposed to, we know the devil can't make us sin. We know we sin because we want to do it. We know that. And we just have to admit it to ourselves. But we have a problem admitting things to ourselves. Oh, they tricked me. Somebody really tricked you in the line? Come on. Nobody tricked you in the line. You lied because you didn't want to tell the truth. Amen? 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And I want to show you that every time that the devil is mentioned in the epistles, it has nothing to do with him having control over you. It has nothing to do with him having control over you. Amen? So what that got to do with pernicious ways? Because people are preaching that fight the devil, fight the devil, fight the enemy. It's the enemy. It ain't nothing you, your own enemy. Get off that kick. Leave the devil alone. The devil uh, uh, has power, but he can only do what God tell him. That means God has the power. He don't have the power. You, you can't say the devil made me do it. No, you made yourself do it because of your evil ways. And you choose to be evil. Amen. Just like you hear me say, just because you got say, I tell the brother, just because you got say, women didn't stop wearing short dresses. Amen. The evil in you make you go places in your mind. Amen. Verse 20. Is that the first one I want? Chapter 10. Um. Yeah, verse 20, chapter 10, verse 20. What does it say? Say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship. So the first time it's mentioned, he said the problem is he's telling Corinthians, which is Gentile. He said, y'all got a problem giving stuff to the devil. Y'all got a problem sacrificing to devil. He said, but y'all don't sacrifice nothing unto God. In other words, y'all to sacrifice your life reputation. People sacrifice uh, 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 their, their body just to get some money. You know, they, they'll sleep with women, sleep with men, men with men, women with women, just to get a name in Hollywood. You, you sell, people sell drugs just to get some money. Why don't you sacrifice your body, your mind, your heart to God and get something from God? So now the devil is not tricking you into that. It's because of your lust. You want to be famous. 
You want people to look at you. You want people to say you're a great preacher. You want people to say that you can do this. So you change what's right and be wrong just to get the recognition. But your wrong is hid in the closet temporarily until God decides to bring it out. And then when it comes out, the first thing you want people to do is forgive you. How about just not doing it? And, and sacrifice to God. Amen. Um, and, and I'm not saying this to be arrogant. I'm a very well-known preacher. Y'all just don't know it. People know it because they, they, they listen to me in secret. And they don't know when they make comments to me. You just told me you just listened to one of my sermons. But I don't say nothing because they don't want to be looked on as sacrificing because if I bow to what you're doing John I got to sacrifice it's a sacrifice I mean y'all think about it. it's a sacrifice to be a member of this church it's a sacrifice people don't fast the way we fast and that's why they throw out stone why yeah y'all holy y'all them real holy folk why we got to be real holy because we obey the Bible why don't you obey the Bible you can be real holy if, if there is such a term amen so that it's a sacrifice but isn't it funny? They'll they're, they're go out and do evil stuff and take the hits with no problem. See, folks will take evil hits and think, and everybody forgive them. And, well, you know, everybody got something wrong. Everybody, okay, why don't you do that with Christ and say everybody's living holy? In other words, Paul is saying, y'all sacrifice to devil. But see, you don't, and, and people don't realize that when you, when you agree to sin, and you know there's a repercussion for that sin, you're sacrificing to the devil. But did the devil make you do it? You want it. Whatever it is, you want it. That's why you did what you did. But nobody forced you into it. Nobody, uh, 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 y'all don't know, but I could have been a movie star, but it wasn't something I liked. Now, I didn't know I didn't like it. I thought I just didn't like it. But God had my mind he gave me the ability to do things but he blocked me from desiring it to make money out of it I, I preferred to make money sitting behind a desk that, that that was my preference no matter what nobody offered me nope I like being an administrator I, I like being but that was all orchestrated by God could I have overrolled that probably could but it didn't come upon me the money was offered I ain't interested I'm not interested amen we all been offered things could have been a dope dealer. Amen. When I, I was in England, uh, three girls came up to me. Well, we were talking one day because I was sitting around them. And I said, man, I should become a pimp. And these women was ready to become. They said, we'll work for you. You serious? I said, no, no. I was just joking. But they asked me the next day. So I could have been a pimp in England where it was legal. So I'm just showing you the opportunity that's been out there. I don't want to do that. No, I'm, I don't want to abuse women like that. That's, that, that. I can't do that. Amen. But see, y'all don't know what, what I or what other people have gone through and denied it. But somebody didn't deny it. Somebody accepted it and said, no, I'm going to do that. Now you're sacrificing. You know what is going to be involved in you being a pimp. Selling drugs, getting in the movie industry, you know that, but you still sacrifice your life and your, your reputation all because of something that you want. Amen? I'm ready to sacrifice for Jesus. If you're going to talk about me, talk about me because I'm holy. If you're going to talk about me, talk about me because I'm strict. Amen? Nobody can point sin at Church of Apostolicity. The only thing they can say about us is, we, is Pastor Portis is too strict. Ask them to show you that I preached something that wasn't in the Bible. They can't do that because they're not going to confront you all. They're going to confront their buddies out there that think like them. How many, how many people have confronted you all? And told you, well, he preached crazy because it ain't in the Bible. How many times? They ain't going to do it. You know why? Because they know it's right. So are we sacrificing for God? Yes. We sacrificing our reputation, but we're getting the best reputation in the world. Because when the rubber meets the road, they're going to always say, them folks over there are really saved. 
they believe in fasting and praying and going to church and all of those different things. But Paul is saying every time, and this is what I want y'all to get, and I notice he's not saying the devil did nothing. We sacrifice. A sacrifice means you, you openly, voluntarily choose to go a particular route. Amen? Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. We voluntarily stay over here. And, and, and everybody, and I don't, I don't say this to try to act like there's no other church out there preaching the truth, but everybody that have left this church have backslid. Let me rephrase it. Everybody that left this church with the Holy Ghost have backslid. Everybody. 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 There's no person that have left this church with the Holy Ghost and didn't backslide. See, I, I still talk to them, and they're in a backslidden state. And, and the more they out there, the more when y'all, if y'all was to see some of them, y'all wouldn't even recognize them. You wouldn't even, you. And, and it's like you don't know what to say to them. Like, you know better. You know better. Why? Because everybody, and this is the key, y'all, everybody that's not living according to the scriptures is in a backslidden position. Everybody. I don't care who they are. If they're not living according to this, uh, 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 what we have to also realize when, they, when we, read, we read the scripture, when he say, and the, the truth shall be evil spoken of, if we don't do exactly what the scripture says, y'all, now, I'm not talking about we, we doing it and we missing and keep missing, but keep working at it. I'm talking about people that have made a decision. I'm not going to do that. I'm, I don't think it take all that. I'm not going to do that. That's a backslidden state. It's, a, it's another thing when you say, man, I messed up again, Lord. Lord, why I keep doing it? Now you're not in a, because you're fighting. Like Paul said, you got to put up a good fight because it take a fight over here. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4. But when you got people that's preaching to you, assisting you in your backslidden state, they're just making you progressively evil even more. They're, they're helping you accept and or justify the way you live so you won't feel condemnation, which we're going to come up to, where you don't feel condemnation about what you're doing. You can't do things wrong and don't feel bad about it. Amen? Verse chapter 4, verse 27. Let's look at verse 26. Now let's start at Let's start at verse 17. Now I'm going to watch this. This is Paul telling them how to stay right. You understand? He's telling them how to stay right. Now, he's believing because they got the Holy Ghost that you know you become right. Now, I'm going to tell you how to stay right. Verse 17 is what? says what? This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth, not as other Gentiles walk. Don't do that no more. Don't do that no more. The vanity of your mind. He said, Paul said, don't do that no more. See, now, he ain't saying that the devil did it. He said, don't do it. Don't do it. Now, vanity of the mind. Let's say we love to get high. All of us that love to get high. Now, we know that that ain't no good, right? So why go back and do it again? Why go back? Who convinced us to get high and stay high? The devil. Now we done got sober. Who convinced us to get sober? God. Now who you going to listen to? Because you can go back. Alcohol is still in the liquor store. Marijuana is free now almost. So you could go back and do it. So don't go back to those vanities because they ain't no good for you. They, you don't profit from them. Amen. Verse 18 say what? Having, and this is what happened when you choose to go back. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, did the devil do that? Or he said, you chose to do that. 
So when you went back in the world, you, you blinded yourself. You chose to step back in the darkness, and God said, you left me. Now, because you want to do that, look what life you got. Now you're going to blame the devil because you wanted to get high again. I'm the first one to tell you, I got some great memories being high and drunk. I'm not going to sit around and say all of it was bad. I'd be a fool to say that. Oh, hallelujah. See, y'all don't like to admit. I, I'm letting the devil know, yeah, Crown Raw was good, but it was wrong. Sleeping with different women was good. Gambling was good. Cheating was good. But it was wrong. Hey, oh, hallelujah. Amen. Fasting for days is hard. But it's good and it's right. Do y'all get what I'm saying? But I get to choose which one I want to do. Right? The devil, the devil ain't making me fast and he ain't making me drink. Oh, hallelujah. When you allow yourself to get blinded, you can't see no more. I'm not going to get blinded no more. I'm going to stay in the light. If I go back in the dark, I'm going to get blinded. You can't see in the dark. When you're in sin, you can't see too good. Come on, verse 19. Who being, watch this, who being past feeling, having given themselves over to lasciviousness to work. He said, y'all had these past feelings and you went back into them? Why did you go back into them? Somebody trick you? Or you just say, man, you know, she look good. She going to always look good. She and the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one going to look good. But they can look good and you be saved too. She look good, but I can't touch her. So why keep looking at her? I can't touch her. Amen. Come on. Verse 20, he said what? But ye... But he said, ain't no way in the world you done got to know Jesus and go back to doing this stuff. That just ain't possible. Something went wrong with your mind. Next verse, he said, what? If so be heard him and been taught by him. If you've been taught by him and you know him, what did he say do next? That she put off concerning the formal conversation, which is corrupt according to. If you really know Jesus, you know what's wrong. You really know what's wrong. And the only way you're going to know Jesus is by the Holy Ghost. So the question is, do you really know Jesus? If you really know Jesus, he said, I don't believe you do that. I don't believe you allow yourself. He ain't talked about the devil tricking nobody yet. He said, you. You made that decision to do that. Come on. What else he said? And be renewed. Why don't you get renewed in the spirit of your mind? I can't go there no more, so I ain't going. I can't think like that no more, so I'm not going to think like that no more. Now, I know it's easier said than done, but you don't get nowhere without practice. None of us became good whores until we practiced being one. Yeah, when, whenever y'all get over that, me talking about that, I'll stop saying it. Because that's what we were. We was good at it. We didn't call ourselves that, did we? But when we got over here, what did God tell you? You was a whore. That's all. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 24 says what? And that ye put on the new man. Is created in righteousness. Hmm. Put on a new man. You say you say, right? I'm born again. I got the Holy Ghost with input. Let me see it. Show it to me. Show it to me. Show it to me. Jesus did not run from the devil. Jesus did not get afraid when the devil showed up. Amen. Come on. 25 said what? Wherefore? Put wait a minute. Just stop lying. Just stop. Don't do nothing you ain't got no business doing and you won't have to try to defend yourself. 
I remember when my pastor accused me of something and uh, I couldn't explain how I not did that when I didn't do it. How do you explain you're not guilty of something when you're like, I don't even know what you're talking about. All I can tell you, I didn't do it. I don't know what you're talking about. I can't explain something. I don't even know what you're talking about. Amen? Wherefore, put away lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor. When we talk with one another, don't lie to me. Because when you lie to me, now you got to uh, dodge and duck and dodge me because you don't want to get caught in your lie. And then you don't talk to me. And now you blaming me for not talking to you because you afraid I done found out about your lie. But if I walk up to your face all the time, I ain't got nothing to hide because I ain't lying to you. At least not that I know of. So why am I ducking and dodging you? Why are you ducking and dodging me? Why some of y'all can't speak to certain people? Because you got a problem with them. But yet you're hollering about you ain't got a problem with nobody. Liar. Tell folks, I got a problem with you. You might get over it faster. But you don't want to admit you got a problem. And then after you had a problem so long, you don't even know the problem is no more. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 26 said what? Be angry. Be angry. People get on your nerve. People get on your nerve, but don't sin because they got on your nerve. Just because people get on your nerve. Now, see, that's what that verse really means. When he say be angry and sin not. Angry really is saying when folk then got on your nerve. But people like to take it to mean angry like they done made you mad. He really saying don't folks get on your nerve. Who don't get on your nerve? I get on your nerve. But you going to sin because I get on your nerve? Because I say something to you and correct you and you don't like it. You're going to leave the church. Now you're going to go and leave the church and sin because you didn't like me getting on your nerve. Spouses, we get on each other's nerves all the time. Children get on parents' nerves all the time. And parents show sure get on children's nerves all the time. But we ain't going to sin because somebody got on your nerves. Amen? And then he said, don't let the sun. You're going to go to bed mad at somebody and wake up mad at somebody. That's, that's, that's a rough life. It's a rough life to be in a small church like this and dodging somebody you don't like. But you don't think nothing of it. It ain't the devil. Amen? Amen. Verse 27, that's the one I come. What does it say? Don't give place to the devil. If the devil, the devil is here, spiritual wise, he's here. When the devil see I don't like Aaron, he's going to make it worse. I'm giving place to him. I've opened the door up and allowed him to come in and assist me in my sin. Do, do y'all understand what I'm saying? When you give place to the devil, you allowed him to come here. So I don't like Aaron. The devil said, yeah, man, you don't like him. Don't talk to him. You think that's you. No, it ain't. Now you done gave, I need help in hating. And he comes along and help you. But you gave place to him. Why don't you give a place to God and say, God, I don't like Aaron. Tell me how to love him. Go over there and say hi. Buy him a gift. Take him out. But the devil's going to say, yeah, don't talk to him. Don't say nothing. Yeah, I don't, don't, y'all, you, you don't like him. I'm going to give a place to the spirit of God so I can fix it. But instead, y'all want to give a place to the devil. You allowed him in here. Amen? What did Aaron do so bad? Did he shoot you? Did he steal your car, take your money, rape your wife? What did he do for you to hate him so bad? Because he got a personality that you don't like. So all of us, well, you got a personality somebody don't like either. Oh, hallelujah. But the devil didn't do nothing, did he? You asked for his help. And he came to your rescue. When you gave place to him, that's you asking the devil for help. You're asking the devil to help you be evil. Because that's all he knows. You sure ain't asking him to help you live holy because he can't do that. So while you're fighting him, just ignore him. Amen? Let's get, look at Ephesians chapter 6. 
Let's start at verse 10. See, you got these people preaching pernicious ways and giving the devil credit where credit it doesn't belong to him. The credit belongs to God, number one. Outside of that, excuse me, the credit belongs to you. The credit belongs to God and to you. Nobody else. The devil is just a pawn. The devil, uh, you know, with chess, them, them pieces are set there, right? They don't move until you move them. Right? The devil is walking around right now, seeking whom he can get. You think he ain't walking around? He's walking around right now, waiting to see who, see who I can get. He's like a pawn. He's just, he just waiting. Now, God can say move, he'll go. Or... He'll keep walking, and then you'll invite him in by saying, yeah, I don't like so-and-so. Oh, yeah. See, you just opened the door. You moved him. He doesn't have power to do nothing. Either God gives him the power, or you give him the power. Are y'all getting this? He don't have the power. The Bible said, resist him. Another one said that all you got to do is just, uh, uh, well, I'll wait till I get there. Come on. Chapter 6, verse 11. I mean, verse 10. He said what? Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power. Uh, see, you can't fight him because you get weak. Why you get weak? Because of your lust, your desires, your wants. Next verse. Put on what? But see, y'all keep putting on pieces. You're going to go out to war and only going to take the sword. Your chest is all open. Your brain is all available. Put on the whole armor of God. When you put on pieces, you're allowing the devil to get to you because you don't have no protection. Watch how he worried this. See, Paul is wording this in a, in a, uh, 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 Bishop Douglas said something to me yesterday. I love talking to him. He always, he always opened stuff up to me. He said, John, he said, uh, I'm trying to be like you. And I'm going, okay, what is he talking about? He said, I don't have a military mind. I'm trying to be a military person. He said, you process things faster and different the way I do. He said, I'm trying to catch up to what you do. He said, because I don't have a military mind. He said, I have a saved spiritual mind. He said, but the way you process things, and Paul talks military. Now, I don't know if Paul was in the military, or, but he sure had power. In other words, I process things in a way like do it or die. If I decide to show mercy, that's my decision. That's not yours. That's the way God is. God said, I show mercy on whom I want to show mercy. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all missing this. That's the way I process things. See, I process things like I show y'all mercy. I let you do something in the church if I want to do it. Don't tell me what you want. I make that, I make that decision. Well, Bishop Douglas will give you a chance. He told the, he told the joke, of, if you was at the leadership, he told the joke about the monkey. Y'all were there when he told about the monkey got on the train. I said, Bishop Douglas so nice, he'll give that monkey another chance. I wouldn't. I'd kill that monkey. <laughs> Amen? But I have to learn to show mercy based on how God, but I got this military mentality where if a person is in charge, you obey them. It's not open for your discussion. It's just not open. It's just not open. Look how Paul, see, now when you got a military mind, you understand what Paul is saying. You're going to war, put on the whole armor. They taught us in the military, you're going to war, you better suit up. Y'all done heard that phrase in movies. They say suit up. We know what that means from, listen, we, we wasn't allowed to not have our shoes shine. If you was in uniform, not having your shoes shine could get your money taken from you. But see, if you ain't been in the military, you don't know they were that strict about it. The gig line. You walked around and, and your shirt and your belt buckle and your zipper on your pants didn't make a straight line. You were in trouble. 
What y'all would think ain't no big deal. No, and that's a big deal. That's the way we dress. Put on the whole armor. You can't say, well, I'm going to war. Let it get messed up in the war. But you're going to approach the war with the gig line right. Oh, hallelujah. You got to be suited up in the whole uniform and got it on right. Amen. You could not wear that cap twisted. That cap had to be square on your head. I remember one time, and, and, and it was pouring down raining. And this, this, this general car, you know it's a general car because it got the stars on it, passed by me. I'm looking at the top and I'm like this, it's pouring down raining. And I didn't salute. Now it's pouring down raining. This general jumps out of his car, full dress, and yelled at me, Aaron, what's your problem, boy? Turn around. He's standing in the rain just to make me salute. Because that's the law. And I turned around and saluted him, and I can't release it. Actually, it's like this. I couldn't release it until he gave it back. Now, he made me stand there in the rain. He's standing there in the rain looking at me. I never forget that. I'm standing there, can't move. Until he, and then he salute me like this. And can't nobody say nothing to him. The only person can question his salute is somebody over him. And he said, don't you ever pass my car again and don't salute. He got out the car. He wasn't even the driver. He told the driver to stop, to get out, to correct me and pour. And I'm talking about pouring down rain. That's the law. So when you, when you really understand God, God said, I don't care about how sick you are. You go do what I told you to do because I control your sickness. Oh, hallelujah. That's one of the reasons that I obey. I, I do what the scriptures say because I got a military mind. The boss say do it. You do it. Verse 11. Put on the. That ye may be able to stand against the wise of the. Listen. When you. Oh glory. Hallelujah. When you learn to obey God. The devil can't mess with you. Because you know Satan. You ain't got nothing boy. Get out of my face. That's the best you got. Because you know. I got on the armor. The whole armor. I don't have on pieces. Verse 12, read, for we wrestle, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the rulers of doctrine of this world, against spiritual wickedness. And saying people think that means that's who we fighting against. No, he's out there. And when you don't listen to God, he's going to attack you because you invited him in. You invited the devil in. We're going to read the rest of it, and you're going to see how you invite him in because you don't have on the whole armor. Do y'all know, uh, and I use women with short dresses because I'm a man, so that's you know, easy for me to explain it. Do y'all know who have women wearing short dresses? The devil. It ain't the woman. They ain't saved. Now, I'm, I'm giving credit to the one that I'll say. They ain't say Who controlling them? Spiritual wickedness in high places. But he know men like, oh, them some pretty legs there. Yeah. So I'm fighting against him. But if I got on the whole armor, that wouldn't affect me. Oh, hallelujah. The reason it bothers me, because I don't have on the whole armor. I have on pieces of the armor. I pay my tithe, but I ain't got rid of the lust. I go to church, but I really don't have faith in God. I read his word, but I don't accept the fact if I lust on a woman, I commit adultery. You see what I'm saying? Now, who's making those calls? You know the scriptures say if you lust on a woman, you, you commit adultery. So who's deciding whether you commit an adultery or not? The devil. See, he's out there. He's got the woman dressed to get me. But I decide if she's going to catch me or not. Oh, the devil set me up today. No, you set yourself up. Because if you was living righteous, sure her legs is pretty. All women's legs are pretty. 
So you decided, I can't help but look at that one. No, you made that call. So it is high place, and it ain't flesh. All of y'all thought that y'all went to the club and y'all picked up this fine woman. That it was a demon telling you to look at this other demon, and that demon was telling, said, telling that woman to look at you, and the demons hooked up, and y'all thought it was y'all. It was demons. Demons looking at each other to kill us. But we don't have that problem no more. We got the Holy Ghost. We say we should have demons influencing us to go chasing somebody. If you got a demon influencing you to chase somebody or be lazy, that's, that's you making that call. You know, doggone well, you ain't supposed to be lazy. Man, y'all know you're supposed to take care of your wives. Come on. Seriously? You know you're supposed to be nice and nurturing and caring for them. You know that. Well, I didn't know that deal. Why in the world you grew up the same person that's telling me I'm not supposed to take care of a woman? Why you grow up saying you don't hit a woman? I mean, you don't harm them. And the Bible ain't never told you not to hit no woman. Hallelujah. The devil told you that. The Bible told you don't hit nobody. Beat up a man, but don't touch a woman. Who told you that? That ain't Bible. Bible said don't hit nobody. Somebody slap you on one cheek, what do he say? So how do you di di differentiate between who you hit based on what the devil put in you? So you go back to these old ways. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Verse 13 said, well, wherefore? Take unto you the whole armor. He repeating. You need the whole armor if you're going to make this thing work. Because if you don't put it all on, it ain't going to work. Put on the whole armor of God that you be able to withstand the evil day. The evil day is that woman with them short dresses on. That's an evil day for you. Withstand the evil day. What else he said? And having done all to stand. Stand. Read. Stand. Do what? Stand therefore with what? Your loin, pull your pants up. Time to be a man. You about to face a test. Oh, hallelujah. Your loin girt about with what? Be honest. Sometime I've been with guys that ain't say, man, she fine. Yeah, she fine. They want to know why I ain't keep looking. I'm saved. I ain't going to sit up here and be a dummy. I'm saved. She ain't fine. She is fine. But that's as far as I can go. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. See, y'all fool yourself. That's why you get tripped up. That's why you get these men and women. I don't need no man. I don't need no woman. And then somebody come along, ain't worth a dime, and, and they got you in the bed. Because you don't want to admit. I have the urges, but thank Jesus, thank God that I can fight them. Be honest. Tell the truth. I've seen plenty of men and women talk about what they won't do, and then when they get hooked up with somebody, it's the wrong one. And then when I confront them, oh, I thought you was over there. Well, you know, sometimes, wait a minute, you told me last year. <laughs> Just be honest. I see, I see, I told y'all, I see pretty women when. Not so much the women are pretty, but I see women be dressed and they look good. But me, see, you know what I do? Take that dress off of them and put it on my wife. I've gone up to them and ask, where you get that dress from? I said, I like this dress. I don't say I like it on you because I know it just on you. But I can take that dress and put it on my wife. Now I can lust all I want. I ain't going to sit up here and say she don't look good in the dress. She look good in the dress because the dress look good. Because if it was a whore, I wouldn't consider her to look good. And she could very well be one. So I done learned, ain't no need of me finding another woman fine when I can find my wife the most beautiful woman in the world. Why well, put myself through that? Be honest, y'all. But y'all don't want to be honest. So you put yourself in a trap. And then you be honest when you get caught. That ain't honesty. That ain't honesty. I ain't found a word for that yet other than being a lie, but... You know, what else he said? And having on the breath plate of. 
put on the best plate of righteousness, meaning I'm going to do what's right. I'm not doing what's best. I'm not doing what seems right. I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to do what's right. Breath plate. That means it's coming from your heart. That means every move I make is based on me doing what's right. So I'm telling y'all about helping y'all in this fast these next few hours. I can make a decision. I can make a decision on my emotions on this side, or I can make a decision on my emotions on this side. But Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? So, <laughs> so I got to wait till God tell me what to do. Oh, hallelujah. Stand there for. Stand. Stand. In the military, I didn't get to go to war, but in the military, when, when, they, when, they, when they put you in that, that uh, gas chamber, they take you in there with your mask off, on, and then they shoot the gas, then they let you stand there and say, take off your mask. They want to see how long you can stand. Where you going? What's wrong with you? They sitting there yelling at you. They got on a mask. <laughs> and yelling at you about you can't handle the gas. They know you're going to run out at some point in time. But, but don't run out as soon as it hits you. Oh, hallelujah. You got to stand for a while. Y'all won't stand. Y'all run as soon as something show up. Having your lawn girt about. Stand. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. If you don't know the gospel, you're going to hell. How are you going to stand and believe God and you don't even know where he think? It's bad enough we don't think like him. But at least get some help and get, at least get an idea on how he think. And the only thing that's going to tell you how God think is the gospel. The good news of Jesus Christ. If, look what Paul say now. And, and, and now he said, all we're doing is fighting against the devil. He said, the devil made you do nothing. He said, the problem with you is that you don't have on the whole armor. Somebody would say, well, I tell the truth. Well, if you ain't telling the truth, you really can't do none of the rest of it. But for sake of discussion, you don't do what's right. Well, I don't pay my tithe, at least I'm honest, and you're going to hell being honest. You think you can do one thing? I had on my uniform. My shoes were shine, but I didn't salute the car. He didn't jump out and say, hey, man, your shoes ain't shine. He didn't jump out and say, hey, man, your uniform ain't right. He jumped out and said, you didn't salute my car. Oh, hallelujah. The car. Y'all get that? Not him. The car. Whether he's in that car or not, the law said, I still salute. But y'all don't know that. I understand, you know, you're not, you're not ex-military, been in the military. You salute the car, whether he's in there or not. That's irrelevant. Well, he ain't in there. He don't need me saluting. But first of all, you can't see because it's got tinted windows. I didn't bother to see if he was in there or not. It was raining, and I wasn't going to be saluting, and I'm blocking water. Amen? So if you don't know the whole gospel, I tell y'all all the time, one sin will send you to hell. We don't need a whole lot of sin to go to hell. He only lists about seven or eight over there in Revelation. And he said, if you fall in one of these, you're going to hell, and all liars. But what have the devil done? Did the devil did anything yet? When I was doing this, could I handle the rain? When I was doing this, I said I couldn't. But when he yelled at me, all of a sudden, I could, huh? So it wasn't that I couldn't handle the rain. I didn't want to handle the rain. Oh, hallelujah. It ain't that you can't handle folk disliking you. You don't want to handle it. It ain't that you can't handle being broke. You don't want to handle it. 
You make those calls. So don't blame the devil because you don't want to do something. That's you not wanting to do something. That's your call. Every time you miss church, who made you stay home? You decide. Well, I don't feel good. So the devil said, yeah, you don't feel good. Sit down. Sit down. But, or did you say, this? I don't feel good. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to relax. You know, I got a little pain. Pastor going to have to understand. Where did the devil show up in that conversation? I, 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 I don't feel good. I don't, I don't, I don't. That's all you. That ain't, that ain't Satan. That's you. You could easily say, I'm going to sacrifice and go to church. Because come Monday morning, you're going to sacrifice and go to work. That's not, that's the devil. Now, now you're sacrificing to the devil. Because you want the money. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Above all, Taking the shield of faith. Don't doubt nothing. You know, a shield, you know, the shield have um, a strap on the back where you hold it, and then and you, you can block anything. Somebody tell you, well, you can't fast. You can't fast no four days. Got my face. You know, you got a shield because you know you can do it. Why? Because you got Jesus. But when somebody get in your head and tell you what you can't do and you accept it, is that the devil or is that you? If you really, if you really trust the gospel, you're going to have the faith and you don't even have to fight the devil. Me and James, I called James today. And he laughed at me. God fixed him. God got him. I, I got here today and the devil said, oh, you can have a little sip of water. Nobody knew nothing about it. I said, Satan, seriously? Come on, man. I ain't drinking no water. Now, I could have easily said, you know what? Nobody here. Yeah. But it was funny. I said, boy, and then I remember that when Jesus was weak, that's when the devil came to him. You know you can jump off this mountain. And he said, he'll send some angels to catch you. Right? But as he said, you know, you know you can make that stone. He talking to Jesus. He knows Jesus. You know, you hungry? You know you're hungry. You know, you can turn that stone and make you some food right there, you know. He said, man should not live by bread alone. Four hours later, James come calling me. Because he laughed hard when I told him. <laughs> I said, James, I wasn't going to fall. I was just sharing with you how slick the devil think he is. And then they start bringing all these nice desserts to his office, smelling up the whole office. And at least I ain't smelling nothing. It was just an offer. God really got him. So, all right, you think it's funny because pastor got tempted. So now let me tempt you. So fill this office up with dessert. He got to arrange them. Mm. That, that's torment, ain't it? <laughs> and the devil said, he said, he got some icing on his hand. The devil said, lick it, <laughs> lick it fast. You can lick it, won't nobody know it. <laughs> I said, then, then he called me, he was sorry. Not too late to be sorry. You laughed at me. Now you see, it don't take much for the devil to throw something out there. That's an evil day. The devil jumping and I'm sure he done tempt all of y'all either yesterday, today. <laughs> he going but that's an evil day. But if you got on the breastplate of righteousness and the word of God and the gospel, you can stand against him. He ain't making you do nothing. He ain't making you do nothing. He dropping the thought. All you got to do is ignore him. Resist the devil and he will. Let me hear him run. Oh, Hallelujah. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you should be able to do what? You can quench them. I quenched it when I said Satan seriously. James quenched it if he made it to the bathroom and washed the ice and all. Amen. <laughs> you can quench the fiery dots of the devil, man. You can quench them. He can't win unless you let him win. And take the what? 
Take the helmet of salvation. Protect your mind. Oh, hallelujah. If you can protect your mind, the only way I, I wrote down here, the only way you can do all of this, y'all, is what is the church? Thank you. Stop sinning. The only way the devil could get me to take a sip of water if I take a sip of water every time I fast. That's the only way. I've been fasting 30 years, and I ain't took a sip of water, not one fast. So how come he still think that? He's throwing the dot. Not that out the way. I ain't done it in 30 years. What made you think I'm going to do it now? And then I went on and told myself, say, now, if I was to do that, here I am, the pastor. What would that look like? I'm telling everybody to fast and hang in there, and I'm knowing I ain't hung in there. That's against, that's against me. That make me feel like a, the biggest hypocrite ever walked around. And I don't want to be a hypocrite. If I'm going to be a hypocrite, I can find other ways to be a hypocrite. Oh, hallelujah. And take the helmet of self. Protect your mind. Protect it. And then what else he said? And the sword of the spirit. Always keep the word of God. Don't let the word of God get away from you. If the word of God get away from you, you lost. Now, I'm going to stop there. Am I? Should I? Yeah. What I got, about 15 minutes? Okay, I better stop there then. Um, what was that, Ephesians 6? Now, now, I'm not stopping Bible class. I'm just not going to go to another scripture, so don't try to get excited. Um, now, if I know that the devil have no power over me, why do I need somebody to preach me back into? Go back to Second Peter. Why do I need somebody to preach to me in pernicious ways? Why do I need somebody to tell me God wants to bless you? Listen, don't you know we get a whole lot of stuff, we're going to mess up. When God gives it to you, you won't mess up. When God gives it to you, you won't mess up. When the devil give it to you, you're going to mess up. We're going to talk about that. We didn't get to it, but you falling into the snare of the devil. See, they preaching people into the snare of the devil, making them think it's all about the pie in the sky and the blessings and all. Listen, they preaching folks into the snare. Live holy. You back in 2 Peter? Verse 1 says what? Who privately this is y'all bring see swift destruction is not at the point where you actually die. Swift destruction is when you're in a backslidden state and don't know it, and you stay in that backslidden state. Uh, Bishop Alexander was preaching out at the anniversary service. And um, he said, he said, if you are not doing what God told you to do, you done backslid. I said, that's good. He said, if you standing back and not doing what God told you to do, you done backslid. He said, and some of the saints like to sit around, well, I've been over here a long time now. I'm just watching y'all. He said, they don't know. He said, they don't know. You done backslid. You got that, because the theme out there was battling and building. That means you got to be fighting while you working. Oh, hallelujah. You got to be fighting to live right. And it ain't, you ain't fighting the devil. You fighting your own stuff. You fighting not to ever give in. Keep that door shut. Don't open that evil door back up. Only open up that righteousness door. Don't open up that holiness door. Keep that evil door shut. 
Because when you open it, you invite the devil in. You invited him in your home. You invited him in your life. He didn't come in there and take over. He didn't force you. You invited him. You invited him. And so, therefore, when you invite people that's preaching lies to you, they're going to gradually teach you evil. They ain't going to just come out and tell you right up front. They're going to gradually do it. It's going to be a lot of folks going to hell, y'all. I think I preached that, what, a couple of Sundays ago? Many, many, many. And few there'll be that find it, but many going in. Somebody say more people in heaven than hell. That's not true. More people in hell than heaven. Compared to the human race that will have lived by the time everything comes to an end. God said he had to make hell bigger. Hell has enlarged itself. Too many folk, so many folks going down there because they don't want to live right. And, and, and here's the sad part. They're going to hell over nothing. They're going to hell over stuff that's going to burn up. They're going to hell over money, sex, drugs, fame, fortune, houses, jewelry, car. Seriously? It ain't worth it, y'all. Amen? And many, let you know, a lot of folks going to follow these pernicious ways. Get off this kick about the devil. He's real. He's alive. He's mobile. He's, he's, he's slick. He's the master deceiver. He's the father of lies. He's all of that. But we don't have to fight him no more. We fight our own bad behavior. We fight our own bad mentality, our own evil heart. And here's the best part of it all. God give you tests and trials based on your heart. So you ought to shout hallelujah when it comes your way. Because he said, I'm going to try your reign to show you who you are. So when something come your way, that's why all things work together for your good. That's why Paul verbalized it that way. He did not reference Jeremiah, but he was saying the same thing God said. I put you in these positions because I want to make you better. I'm trying your reins. I need you to see you're not who you think you are because your heart is deceitful and desperately wicked, and it's a trick you. It's a trick you. And you think you all this, and you ain't nothing. Amen? Amen. Come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Y'all ain't got strength to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, say it. Hallelujah. All right. Y'all just sitting and waiting to see what y'all going to do about this fast. All right. I'm going to believe this is what God is saying. So when I believe it, I say I know it. This is what we're going to do. We ain't talking about next week yet. We're talking about just this one day. So don't talk about it and all. Because I, I, you know, I got some call from some people, and I know they, 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 they're, they're really struggling. And I, and I got sympathy for you. I got mercy. Amen. But you're not hungry. I'm telling you, you're just tired of being weak. All right? This is what you do. After we dismiss tonight, you can drink and eat, or if you want to, till midnight. After midnight, you go back. And we're going to go till 4 o'clock. Now, everybody do it. I don't want nobody saying, well, I can hang. That ain't the point. We're going to all do it together. If you don't want to drink but one cup of tea, that's good. If you want to drink two and five gallons of water, that's fine. Amen. Now, I really suggest you not to eat food unless it's watered, watered soup. I really suggest. But if some of y'all are hard-headed, you're going to do what you want to do. But you're going to find out. You're going to. You're going to take them few swallows of tea or water, and you're going to be fine. And go till 4 o'clock tomorrow. At 12 o'clock, you stop. And don't rush out of here. <laughs> oh, we ain't got but three hours. I'm going by. <laughs> Do everybody hear me? You got from now until Tony say amen, you got from that point until midnight. But you're going to pick it back up at 12. Now, let me, let me, let me encourage y'all. Let me encourage y'all. Y'all stop laughing. Listen to me. 
Let me encourage you. What we're doing is serious. We want to turn this world upside down. Them apostles fasted the way we are fasting more often than we did. Amen. Now, we're going, we're going to fast more. Now, we know we got what is, I think it's May coming up, but we go, what, two weeks? Will we eat one meal a day? Is that in May? Listen, let's get serious about the fasting, y'all. Let's get serious about it. I know, I know you're tired. I know you're sleepy. I know you're weak. You got headaches. You got backaches. All of these different things. I know it. Praise the Lord. I do too. Amen. Your mouth is dry. My biggest problem is nasty taste in my mouth. Amen. But the rest of it, I can hang until 4 o'clock tomorrow. But if, 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 if God is telling me to tell y'all you got to 12 to midnight, then I have to do, you know, I have to do it. Because I seen Simone come in, and she's like, man, Pastor, I can do it. And I'm like, man, how can I stop her, Lord? She's having fun. Because we went, we went four days last year, and we didn't take no break. I gave y'all a break on the fifth week. We're well, on the week with five days. But nevertheless, God is merciful. He don't want nobody passing out, getting fired or nothing. But y'all better belly up and fight this next week. So y'all better pray and ask God to help you through this next week. I'm going to give you some leeway next week, but it ain't going to be like this. All right? We got, listen, let's do this, man. We can do it. And when we come out on the other side, we're going to be like, yeah. I can do this. Amen. Amen. All right. Come on, Sister Tony. Everybody understand, right? And don't forget to buy your ticket for the uh, prayer breakfast. <laughs> okay, so support is want to see y'all on Sunday after morning service. We'll talk about this later. It's women. Not the infeminine, just the women. Everybody, please stand. A little fascinating. All heads bowed in the precious and wonderful name of Jesus. We thank you again for tonight, Lord God. Just reminding us, Lord Jesus, that you love us, Lord God. Reminding us that whatever we go through is because you're pulling our reins, Lord God. you just getting some out of us, Lord Jesus, so you can put something good in us. So we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the trials. We thank you for the tribulation. We thank you for the fast, Lord God. Although we get weak, Lord Jesus, all it takes, Lord God, is you just reminding us, and it gives us a little more strength, Lord. We just thank you, Lord God, for your mercy, Lord Jesus, always your grace, Lord God. And we just thank you for everybody that's here, Lord God, all our brothers and sisters. Help us to get closer. Help us fast, Lord God, just to clear our minds out and our hearts, Lord God, and just have us focused on you, Lord Jesus. We want to bless the offering on tonight. Continue to use it for the building of your kingdom. Uh, revive our pastor, Lord God. Give him back when he needs, Lord Jesus, so that he can come back and still continue to give us what you want, Lord. Continue to bless the first family. Bless everybody in your sanctuary. Bless those that weren't able to make it, Lord Jesus. Prick their hearts, Lord God. Let them know, Lord Jesus, that they got to be here, Lord God. And we just thank you, Lord Jesus. Help us tomorrow, Lord God, as we get one more day, Lord Jesus, up into four, Lord. Help us to just fast the way we're supposed to, God. And if we get weak, help us to pray, to call a pastor, whatever we need to do, Lord. But just keep us in one unity, Lord God. Keep us all on the same track. We just love you. We praise you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.